brothers and sisters. What a beautiful morning it is. What a joyous morning. I want to say thank you to those few people out here that through the thick and the thin, you're wise enough to understand you got ears open and you got your eyes on or open. You got eyes to see and ears to hear and hearts to believe past all the rhetoric. You're able to see the th truth through the lies. <clears throat> now there's those of you that's watching me. Maybe not at this moment, unfortunately. But those, are, those, there is those of you that are watching me that you're not even, you don't have a relationship with the Lord like you'd want to. You don't feel close to Him. You know you're not close to Him. You even have a million questions. <clears throat> you don't even understand why Jesus had to come to the cross to give His life for us. But still yet, you're here. And that says something for you. I had a man call me yesterday from this channel. And I, I really respected that man. I didn't realize that there are people out there that actually don't understand why Jesus had to went to the cross. I've, I guess I've gotten... <clears throat> it's like you move to a city, a town, somewhere. And at first, the surroundings, you know, can be beautiful. It's the mountains. It's, you know, uh, open fields. Or it's just something completely new to you. And it's so beautiful. But after you've lived there for many years, you begin to take it for granted, not even thinking about it anymore. God's natural beauty is just it's just there and we don't even we forget all about it and I, I, I actually live in one of those such areas I mean it is absolutely gorgeous here uh, and there's like some rock walls uh, a couple blocks over <coughs> or about a mile well after I get out of my neighborhood I uh, get out on the main road going into town there's some uh, rock walls there and they are just gorgeous to me. They always have been. But I find myself, after a few years, of not even having thought about it anymore. Just one day out of the blue, I'll realize the rock walls again. And I'll be like, oh Lord, how did I take this place for granted so much? I know we've got the beautiful lake here. got so many amazing places where you can just go and be with the Lord in nature and enjoy God's beauty and look up at the sky and there, you can always find a place that's secluded and you know don't have nobody there or you can find places that does have people you know whatever whatever the, you know feels suitable for you in that moment but we tend to take it all for granted and that's exactly what I've done in a sense with my walk and my knowledge with the Lord is I I've been so many years knowing the different aspects of scripture and, and of Jesus and the whys and the hows that I've gotten settled in and, and I forget that there are actually many people out there that don't know they truly don't know but yet there are still those folks that they don't know. They, they, they may have a slight clue. Maybe they don't have a clue. But there's something constantly pressing at their heart. They know there's something more. But somehow or another, the distractions of their own lives or, you know, keep them from going to church or maybe the churches they go to, every church is the same and they're judgmental or they just don't preach the message that needs to be preached to to get us to, you know, that helps us out to understand things or 
uh, or they're just all about the money and and, and, and so because they're always talking about, well, here's the tithe, you know, the offering plate. And they're always passing it around. Or it seems like that's all they're talking about. Or where you go to the churches, and, I, and I've seen this too. There was one church in particular I went to. All they did, they never, that pastor never talked about the gospel of Jesus Christ. Every time he took the, the podium, it was all about politics. And this was over four years ago. There is hardly a good church out there anymore, my friends. And so we we go to these churches because we have that that knocking at our hearts, that calling. We know there's something more, but we can't figure it out because nobody will ever answer our questions. And if we try to ask some of these people, they just kind of give us a short answer and blow us off and move on. Because let's face it, pastors are taught in Bible school <laughs> that uh, that as a pastor your life is going to become so busy so many people are going to call up, call upon you that you got to limit your time that there's going to be many people that want to you know just ramble on and ramble on and you got to limit your time say five minutes per person no more than that and and even less than that if if uh, you're able to do it and so that's the mindset that these pastors adopt because that's what they was taught in Bible school. Here's the problem with that. When you do that, the longer that that person talks trying to explain what it is that they don't understand and trying to ask that question, now that you're four, four and a half minutes into your five minutes that you, deadline that you set, and so now you got 30 seconds to a minute to answer because you're dead set that you're going to keep that five minute timeline. And so you just blow off people with an answer that really is not an answer. And therefore, and I'm really talking to you pastors at this point, and therefore, what you have done is you have taken the calling that is upon your life to be a pastor or the calling that you've just chosen to force and pretend like it was your calling. And the Lord can work with things. Even if we force it, the Lord can work with it and he can turn it to good. Okay? So either way, that's that's, that's between you and the Lord and that's fine. If you forced it because that's really what you was passing around, that's really what you wanted to do with your life, that was a career choice you wanted to make, but it really wasn't called, it, it really wasn't ordained by God, that's fine. The Lord can still use it. But whatever the reason is, whatever got us into the ministry, it was ultimately with the thought process behind it of winning souls to Christ <clears throat> now how can we win souls to Christ if, if we blow people off and we limit ourselves to five minutes per person now yes we do have to utilize our time wisely yes we need to try to get we, need, we, we have to figure out a way to get those that are talking to us to get to the meat of what they're talking about because a lot of people let's face it a lot of people will ramble you know a lot of people will ramble because they just don't have anybody else to talk to and 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 when they begin to talk they realize this person's actually listening to me oh my goodness i need to go ahead and get everything that's been on my chest for many many years i need to get it all out there i really need to do a good job explaining myself so for those of you that aren't pastors and that are right uh, of that mindset you won't even realize you're of that mindset it'd be kind of subconscious I uh, so for those of you with that mindset I want you to pay real close attention here and <clears throat> when you do ask your pastors questions try to get to the meat of things okay as quickly as possible because the longer you take to get to the meat of things the more distracted in the mind that that pastor is going to become you know because he or she, whatever, is going to feel like it, you're just not going to get as good of an answer. Okay, now for you pastors, listen to me. You've got to exercise more patience. Okay, if a person does ramble on, yes, you have you need to have uh, something at the ready. You know, after you've prayed about it, you ask the Lord and let the Holy Spirit guide you. 
okay, what is an appropriate response that is respectful but gets this person to, you know, where I can interject at a, at a respectful moment. I can kind of say, hold on a second. Let me say something for a moment. And then in a very respectful way, not to offend, okay, try to get that person to get to the heart of what they're, of the, what they're talking about. Get to the meat of it. Then that way, we don't feel so pressed for time and we can actually give an appropriate response. Now, here's another aspect of that. You pastors, listen. A lot, of you, a lot of you pastors aren't quite as busy as you'd like to pretend to be. And your particular calling may simply be to listen to one person for hours on end. Maybe a little frustrating. Okay. But wait a minute. Don't we have the mindset of if we can just save that one out of 99, it would all be worth it? Well, then why can't you take a few hours out if that's what's called upon, if that's what's needed to listen to somebody? Mm -hmm. All right, some food for thought here. If we are really of the mindset that my entire career as a pastor or, or teacher, preacher, whatever, if if my entire career, if I if I only save one, then it's still worth it. It all have been worth it. If you have that mindset, but you can't give people your time, you're falling out of the bonds of the Holy Spirit and the ways of Jesus Christ. Just got to say all this. It's, it's pressing on my heart this morning. I actually only I, I opened the mic to pray, and then this all started coming out. So I wrote with it. When that happens, I understand that the Holy Spirit has something to say, and there it is. <laughs> sometimes I do feel a little long-winded myself, but sometimes that's what it takes, and sometimes it takes reiteration of the same thing over and over in order to really instill it into the hearts get people to re actually retain it in their memories so let's go ahead and go into prayer here dear father we come to you this morning and we first ask you to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us in the shed blood of your son Jesus Christ and we rebuke all demonic forces and Lord, I, I ask you to give me more patience, Lord. Help me to be able to get people that are talking to me, to get them to the meat of what they're, they're getting after. But at the same time, Lord, if there's nothing more pressing, if there's not somebody else that needs me worse, rather that be another... <clears throat> potential believer that doesn't quite understand things yet and doesn't believe and, and therefore is not not saved through your grace or rather that be things to do with my son if there's not something more pressing Lord give me the patience which I've already got you've already given that to me praise the Lord praise the Lord but continue to strengthen and build my patience to be able to listen and take however long out of my what I want to pretend is such a busy day so that I can actually minister to each person individually Lord move upon this nation and the pastors of this nation Lord to hear this message and adopt the same mindset <coughs> praying always with all supplication to the saints with all fervency all sincerity and all humbleness that we may know what thy good and perfect will is we rebuke all demonic spirits here in the mighty name of Jesus Christ Jesus Christ Jesus Christ Jesus Christ 
because it is in that mighty name that Satan you have to flee and it is in that mighty name that all your fallen angels and demonic spirits have to flee in the mighty name in the mighty name in the mighty name of Jesus all demons have to flee and it's in We've got the victory, we've got the victory, we've got the victory, oh, in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, we love you, Father. We thank you so much for your graces and for your grace and for your mercy. And we thank you so much that you aren't too busy to give us the time of day. We thank you so much that you don't limit us to just five minutes, Lord. No matter how busy you are, with billion, billions of people in this world constantly trying to knock at the doors of all of their hearts, you're able to take time and as much time as is needed to talk to me, to hear me, to listen to me, and even to talk back and to minister to me and be patient with me as I struggle to, to understand that it's you talking to me in that moment. And I'd like to thank Lord, I'd like to thank Lord that anybody listening to this broadcast right now is giving their gratitude and saying, oh yes, Father, oh yes, let me second that gratitude, Lord. Let me make this my prayer. You know, my friends, prayer, prayer has always been a complicated subject for me. How do I pray properly? <clears throat> understand how to pro pray properly and I, I did the best I could I <clears throat> you know was always asking for stuff and as years went on I, I realized I needed to stop asking so much and start thanking so I try to force myself to thank him for you know whatever but it started out where it was just a general thanks you know what I know I need to thank you Lord because I know you do so much so let me just say thank you for all that you do I realized that's not good enough that's nothing more than a narcissist giving a blanket apology the narcissist they do so much evil so much wrong they cause so much pain and hurt grief and then out of the blue one day they'll they'll apologize but with a narcissist, you'll never, you'll never get a specific apology from them. It'll always be a blanket apology. I'm so sorry that I hurt you. Okay. That's not an apology. That's a blanket apology. All right. Or, or, or you'll get the you know what, thank you for all that you've done, or thank you for all that you do. And there'll, and there'll never be any specifics. There'll never be specific about any of anything that they're thanking you for, because the thing is, is they're not thanking you for anything specific. They're not apologizing for anything specific. What they're doing is they're trying to make you believe in that moment that they're apologetic or that they're grateful because they know that that's what you want to hear. And, and so they want to tell it to you because there's motive behind it there's something they want and you can always stand guaranteed that with a narcissist when they apologize and, or they give you uh, praise for something you know especially when it's just a blanket deal whether it's that moment immediately afterwards or it's an hour or two later or even the next day 
the longer it takes past the point of of why they're saying thank you or apologizing, the longer it takes, I've learned, the bigger the thing is that they want because now they're they're groom, grooming you. They're they're right. They're they're trying to butter you up. And and we the human race are no different with God. We do the exact same thing with God. And we may not be narcissists ourselves in the eyes of man, but in the eyes of God, that's exactly what's going on. There are demons for every evil thing. There's different demons for every evil thing, and they all have names. One of them is the demon of narcissism, or demons, plural, of narcissism. And even though in the eyes of man, we don't demonstrate any form of narcissism, in the eyes of God, he's calling it as it is. When we do that blanket apology or that blanket thank you, and we know, and he knows that there's something more brewing, because he can see into our hearts, he knows everything. There, we can't hide anything from him. We might can hide stuff from men, or at least think that we can, and and we, and we can if the people we're hiding, hiding things from are not walking upright with the Lord and in the fruits of the Spirit, uh, you know, and thereby having discernment. <clears throat> But we're not hiding anything from God. We're not fooling God. We're not pulling the blanket over his eyes. And so when we just do a blanket apology or a blanket uh, appreciation, knowing that we're about to ask for something that is indeed the spirits of narcissism activated and God is not going to have anything to do with that if you're given a blanket thank you or a blanket apology to God forget it he's going to close his ears to you because he's not going to have any part with darkness and spirits of narcissism is complete darkness and he is not going to have anything to do with that now he will see your heart when you're doing it and there will be there will be off times where you do it because you really just truly you either don't have the strength to try to break it down to God you you, you don't have enough practice in, in doing so there's going to be <clears throat> circumstances in which why you do the blanket apology or the blanket uh, appreciation and God will hear you and it won't actually be narcissism. It'll be you trying, and God sees that because he sees all. He sees deep into the heart where no man can see. But at some point, as we're growing in Christ and we're developing from being a baby Christian to a more mature Christian, if we continue to do that, now at some point that does turn into the spirits of narcissism operating within us. <clears throat> Or, or it could even be that the spirits of narcissism was always there and now more and more of them spirits are coming in and taking over. <clears throat> when we pray, we need to stop looking at it in a manner of even bowing our heads, the act of bowing our heads or the act of getting on our knees and putting our hands together. <clears throat> It doesn't have to be so complicated. You see just how I'm talking to y'all right now? I can't see y'all. I can't hear y'all. But I'm talking to you. And that's what we're supposed to do with God. Now, now if y'all want to get a message through, there is another way. You can put it on the chat board. But here's what I got to do in order to hear your message at that point. I got to focus. I got to pay attention. And I got to have a heart to want to hear you. Meaning that I actually take the time to look at that chat board. And then I take the time to actually respond or whatever. And, and we're no different with God. God will talk to us. But just like I can't see you and I can't hear you. You the viewer. Neither can I see or hear. Or neither can I see God nor hear from Him audibly. Okay, I can't hear you, the viewer, audibly. You might be talking to me right now, but I can't hear you. 
But there's another way that I can hear you. But that requires me having a heart to want to hear you. And when God speaks to us, we've got to have a heart to want to hear from God. When y'all are writing on that message board, I've got to, if I want to hear what you're saying, I've got to eliminate, I've got to keep, I've got to take my focus away from everything going on around me, no matter what it is. And I've got to put it on that chat board. Now, ultimately, that chat board is not my God, so that chat board is not priority to me. You know, my son is priority to me. My, my family, my people here is more priority to me than the chat board. But with God, <clears throat> yes, while I still have to make sure that things are safe around here while commuting with God, God should be our top priority. And where I might put my family, my son, and <clears throat> and people right here in person with me a little bit above that chat board, <clears throat> I'm not going to do that. And neither should you when it comes to God. What's What should be the matter of importance is on subject matters uh, in this life? First off, God. Number one, above and beyond everything else, God is top importance, top priority. Above and beyond anything else. Your family, your children, your work, anything. God is number one. However, family in my Opinion, family, especially your children, your spouses, should be top number two, running right up there neck and neck with God. But God has to be just a little above that. We don't want to, we don't want to neglect our families. We want to make sure that we give them the proper uh, attention that they deserve make sure that we continue to keep joy within our own families keep peace within our own families because if we're not keeping peace and joy within our own families let's face it we're not going to be able to stay in tune with God it's not going to happen my friend if you're fighting and bickering with your spouse it's not going to happen you're not going to be able to stay in tune with God with his Holy Spirit he's not going to be able to minister to you not going to be able to give you direction he's not going to be able to tell you hey this is what i want to want you to do or you know this is this is how you can overcome this or that obstacle he's not going to be able to hear you or you're not going to be able to hear him which leads me to something else i suppose we as christians we're to be the bigger people the bigger man the bigger woman the bigger child okay let's say our spouse or somebody just anybody whatever but for some reason in this moment I'm thinking spouse <clears throat> and forgive my unprofessionalism please of uh, snorting and coughing on the open mic but you know hey I'm human okay uh, y'all get to do that with comfort and ease you're not in front of a camera you're not an open mic and I'm not prof a professing perfection anyway not to get sidetracked <clears throat> your husband or your spouse or anyone does something or says something that you don't agree with yes our spouse should not ever make us feel as though we don't have a right to speak and and we, we should speak however exercising James 119 while speaking let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to anger, for the wrath of man is unrighteousness to God. <clears throat> now, when our spouse or loved one or friend or whoever it is in that moment says or does something that angers us, those who are off the milk are no longer feeding off the nipple and are more mature in getting the the whole milk all right that vitamin d stuff okay we're metaphorically speaking here 
right? Those more mature Christians. We may not get it perfect at first, and it may take a whole lot of practice. <coughs> but <coughs> we're going to constantly strive to do better each time in our stepping back even if we're just sitting on on the couch or whatever it's not a matter of actually literally stepping back it's stepping back in our spirit saying hold on let me process this <laughs> meanwhile this this other person whether it be your spouse or whoever meanwhile while you're choosing to step back and exercise patience being slow to speak allowing the holy spirit to move this other person is still constantly in the background running their mouth destroying things whatever the case may be and you're sitting there and you're like, I'm gonna kill him, I'm gonna kill him, I'm gonna kill him, I'm gonna kill him, I'm gonna kill him. Love you, Ma. Alright. But you're you stop and you say, you know what, Lord, let me be slow to speak, slow to react. Let me exercise the patience, the gift of patience that you've given me. Please come over me right now in the name of Jesus. I rebuke all demonic forces and I cast them out in the mighty name of Jesus. And then you begin to call each demonic spirit out as it is. The the demon uh, demons called anger. Demons called narcissism. Narcissists. Uh, demons of pride. Demons of lust. I. Uh, demons of profanity you name it okay you as you mature in Christ and you begin to learn the spiritual warfare and 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 the different names for the demons <clears throat> the scripture tells us we have the power to rebuke Satan and the fallen angels we have the power through the name of Jesus Christ to cast them out and send them into the depths of the sea does that mean they can't come back? No. But that's where we're to keep our armor on. Keep the warfare on up. And in that moment, as you're sitting there and you're you're taking in all this anger and this bitterness and this frustration from this other person, this spouse or loved one or friend or even enemy or whoever it may be, you're keeping a calm and a peace about yourself because you know ultimately who your enemy is. And in that moment, that person displacing all of the anger and that bitterness as they're screaming and they're yelling and they're cursing and they're throwing things and breaking stuff and putting their fists through walls. You know, ultimately, that's not who your enemy is because Ephesians chapter 6, 10 through 18 tells us. It says we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against blah, blah, blah. Basically, the blah, blah, blah is the rulers of darkness, the, the demonic forces, Satan and his, Lucifer and his fallen angels. That is who our war is against. That person that is expelling all that hatred and anger, that's the appearance of it. Here's what, what, no, here's what we've got to forgive them for. The only thing that we've got to forgive them for is the decision that they made that caused them to go into that. And that decision was in which whom to serve in that moment. Now let me tell you, friends, when we'll make that decision and humble ourselves, let the situation, let it dissolve. Let them get it all off their chest. <clears throat> Meanwhile, inside your spirit, you're casting out demons and uh, and you're, you're speaking the name of Jesus Christ, not necessarily audibly, okay, because that's going to cause an even further inferiority infuriation okay and if you're doing it audibly now the lord knows our heart okay and he can still work okay especially as you're putting all this into practice and and i've done this so many times i will actually speak this audibly uh for the person that that's carrying on i'll just start saying jesus christ out loud jesus christ jesus christ jesus christ i, I bind you up and cast you out in the mighty name of jesus christ well here's the issue with that okay now them, them demons don't necessarily have to leave because now I, I'm not exactly sure if I know how to explain this but what you're doing is you, you're now by doing that feeling like you have to do that that's, that's, al that's almost become a form of revenge and pride 
and now you're 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 stepping almost outside of your authority maybe uh because it's not with a humble heart of your own you're doing it out of anger and spite to try to crawl under that person's skin as you're doing it and trying to and you're it's, it's like you're trying to portray yourself as a better person i'm gonna i i'm just gonna i, I i'm more i'm more man enough or woman enough than to entertain this and so you disrespect your spouse or the person that's carrying on by trying to do this audibly now the lord does know your heart he does okay and if you're doing this it doesn't mean that he's not going to come in and he's not going and, and, and jesus christ is not going to make those demons flee okay he will but if you begin to use the name of jesus christ as a weapon for destruction a weapon for pride a weapon to get your way that's where we've crossed the lines my friend no when we are fighting this demonic force this is where the scripture tells us to go into our prayer closets does that mean a literal closet no no people we go into the prayer closets into our secret places within our spirit man Rather, we have to close our eyes to get there, which oftentimes I do, most of the time I do. But one thing we learn is that the person is carrying on. When we take this stance, before we've actually successfully gained, uh, garnered the strength to start saying the name of Jesus within our own spiritual prayer closets, as we're putting this into practice, the demons are getting so much more angry and they're really firing up. All right. And they're just tooth and nail and maybe even they're getting physical with you. I don't know. But that's because the demons, they know they've got millions or billions of years of combined experience and they know what's fixing to happen and they're getting even stronger to try to take your strength from you to keep you from calling upon the name of Jesus now even as a baby Christian maybe even as someone that doesn't understand anything much to do with the Bible you, get, you feel this knocking on your heart you like I know there's something more I just don't understand it I don't understand any of it but I know there's something more let me tell you this the Lord knows your heart and he's going to send somebody to help you to understand these things whether that be me or some pastor or some total complete stranger that you've never met in your life the Lord will send somebody but in the meantime <clears throat> the name of Jesus simply calling upon the name of Jesus in any situation you say Father God you don't pray to Jesus okay you pray to the Father and you pray coming to him in the name of Jesus so basically it'd be like you think I want you to think of your very favorite person right now whoever whoever the, the one is that you love more in life than anybody else okay now you got this person in your heart or in your mind in your spirit okay all right keep that name there okay this person that you love more than anybody else in, in this world all right now a total stranger comes up to you and they, ha they say hey so and so hi can I get a hundred bucks <laughs> you're gonna like do what you're gonna step back and be like huh hi and some of you might actually give it some of you won't but even if you do give it, in, it whether you show it or you don't whether you show it or you don't in your spirit in your mind you're going to be super super hilarious but now now we're going to take that name that, I, that you've got in your heart right now of the person you love more than any, anybody else in this world okay now this total stranger comes up to you and they say hey so and so be in the name that's in your heart of the person you love more than anybody else in this world okay so and so told me that if i'll come to you and ask you for a hundred bucks that you give it to me now you're gonna be like 
Oh, okay. Now you're gonna be a little more relaxed about it. Now you, you you're gonna be like, okay, yeah, I, well, you know, I love this person this much, and if they said this, yeah, I, let, let me do that because because I'm actually not at that point. We're not giving that person a hundred bucks because we because we anything to do with them. No, we're giving that person a hundred bucks because in our hearts, that person we love more than anybody else in this world. We're doing it because of how much love we have for them. Now, our Father in Heaven is no different, okay? We go to the Father and we ask Him whatever our heart desires, as long as it's not an aim is to consume upon our lusts. We're not going to ask for a brand new Ferrari. We're not going to ask for a $6 million jet, you know, none of that. You get my picture. I don't need to carry on there, okay? But we go to the Father and we ask for the desires of our hearts. And when we do this, we tell him that his son Jesus Christ sent us to ask him of these things. Now, because he has so much love for his son Jesus Christ, because you have so much love for that person that just means the most to you in this world. All right, metaphorically speaking a little bit here. Okay, stay with me. Now, the father is going to give us the desires of our hearts, not because... Not because of anything to do with anything we've done. Let's face it. We are the most undeserving clan of people or the the most undeserving bunch of people. So it's not because of anything we've done. But because he loves his son Jesus Christ so much is why he will give us the desires of our hearts, the things that we ask him for. Now when we go into prayer... We are going to talk to God really no different than I'm talking to you right now. I can't see you. I cannot hear you, but I can talk to you, and I know that you're listening. God is the same way. I can talk to God. I know he's there. I cannot see him. I cannot hear him audibly, but I know he's listening. And just like you, the viewer, you can speak to me, but I have to be paying attention. Okay? You can speak to me via that chat board. And now God, the Father, His Holy Spirit, can do the same thing. He can speak to us via the internal chat board. But we have to be paying attention. We have to want to hear from Him. Just like if, if I want to hear from you, the viewer, I have to be paying attention to that chat board because I want to. So we just have a conversation with him, like I'm having with you right now. Tell him everything that's on your heart. Tell him your fears. Tell him your your doubts. Tell him your desires. Tell him the things that you're so grateful for. (gasps) One thing that I have learned is mankind is such a demanding bunch. We're always so demanding. We want, 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 want. But we hardly ever want to give back. Matter of fact, we get right down to it. We don't ever want to give back. We're a selfish clan. We're a selfish bunch of people. But as we grow in Christ and we grow in the Word, at that point, Now, we actually do begin to want to give. And the more we grow, the more we realize we want to give far more than we ever want to take. Until it gets to where I'm at. And where I'm at is I I actually, I almost despise even asking God for anything of a personal level anymore. Because I know that ultimately, the things of this earth, I can't take them with me. And even to pray for uh, such thing as, as, Lord, let this be an awesome day or an awesome week. Don't let me have any, any issues whatsoever. No car accidents, no this, no that. Okay, I get it. You know, you're sincere. This is what you want. 
and, and God will actually answer that prayer. Okay, He will. However, what we got to realize when we're praying that is we may have just stopped somebody from coming to Christ, learning about Him in our praying that. And what I mean, let's let's take for example that <clears throat> that you're destined to be in a car accident during the course of the week, but you just prayed. That you that the Lord save you from any car accidents during the course of that week. Okay, and God's going to honor that. Okay, I. But what the the behind the scenes thing that we didn't realize is if that car accident would have happened, there was a man or a woman in that car that was on their way to jump off a bridge or put a gun to their head and pull the trigger. But because of that car accident, it kind of snapped them out of that depression. At least for the moment, brought them back to reality. And in the manner in which we, the follower of Christ, handle ourselves, slow to speak, slow to wrath, quick to listen, quick to admit our own faults, accept responsibility for our part, even if it was 100% their fault, still yet, I don't care, with a, with a car accident, there's really not an accident that is, a, well, for the most part, there might be here or there the exception, but any accident, it might be 99% uh, the other person's fault, but in my opinion, there's always still 1% of that, at the very least, that is still our fault, you know? You know, in that split second, we made the wrong judgment call. Maybe we should have swerved left instead of swerved right. You know, uh, uh, maybe we should have hit the brakes a second sooner instead of uh, thinking, oh, no, that's not going to happen. And then, so it caused us to delay or whatever the case is. There's still got to be at least 1% that is our fault, even no matter what. And that's just my personal opinion. So when we get out, and it could be anything, I'm just using this car accident thing as an example. But when we get out of that car, instead of ranting and raving and carrying on, how dare you? Why would you go 120 miles an hour in a 25 mile an hour zone? Blah, 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 blah. Hold on now. Is that love? No. Now this person knows what they was doing. Now when you get out and you behave in that manner, there's a defense mechanism built into every human being. They're automatically going to want to defend themselves. Whether they're right or they're wrong, whether they know it or they don't know it, they automatically want to go into defense mode. How dare you talk to me that way? Blah, 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 blah. Okay, now, even though it was their fault, even though they was doing 120 miles an hour in a 25 mile an hour zone, the fact is, is the way you approached it <clears throat> the way you approached it escalated the situation and that is not what Christ would have us to do okay now if you get out and with a humble heart yes you might have some whiplash whatever the case may be okay however the situation plays out your initial reaction and every action after that is with humbleness humility servitude attitude attitude of servitude okay you know what i'm sorry I, I i i might could have hit the brakes a little sooner i apologize i i i maybe i maybe i seen that yellow light starting to change as i was as i was you know right up on the light maybe i could have Maybe I could have stopped a little sooner. I apologize, you know, for that. Accepting responsibility. Now, what's this going to do to the other person? I mean, now, if they're just a Satanist, atheist, and, you know, uh, agnostic, it, uh, it may not do anything. I don't know. Okay. And then again, even those people, if this is your attitude, even those people, I've seen and heard stories of how even the most atheist of a person has been brought to Christ 
because of certain things, you know, whatever the case is that the Lord uses. So in that moment, we reflect and we realize what part of that was our fault. And instead of being accusatory and calling out the hundred thousand things that was their fault, we call out that one little sliver of a thing that was our fault. And when we do that, that's not going to put that person in defensive mode anymore. It's going to make them be like, huh, what? Because this is a manner of, of things that this person isn't used to. They're not used to somebody accepting responsibility. No, they're, they're, they're used to the ways of the world. They're used to the demonic ways, even though they don't realize that's what it is. And so it causes them to stop in themselves. And it actually forces a being slow to speak and slow to wrath within them, their own selves. And even as you do that, like maybe they're getting out of their car already pumped and they're already yelling before they even get out of their car. And as they're ranting and raving, you're taking responsibility for your little 1% or 1/100th one one of 1% instead of being accusatory. And they're carrying on and carrying on and carrying on as you just kind of go quiet. And then it's like, all of a sudden, they just, right in the middle of their rampage, they just stop. And this little light switch moment kind of happens in, in that moment. And they're like, wait a minute, what'd you just say? And they might even come off all hostile, you know, as they say, it. wait a minute, what'd you just say? You know, in that moment, now we got to, we got to keep ourselves in check again. Because in that moment... one in that moment they're taken back and they got to clarify what just was said what just happened now at that point that's your chance to repeat yourself and again and again you're going to apologize and accept responsibility for that one one hundredths of one percent of whatever it was that you did wrong and now that's going to shut that person that's on a rampage up because what can they say you just accepted responsibility <clears throat> now does that mean you're going to accept responsibility with the insurance company you know and, and the police and all that no you're going to tell the truth you're going to tell exactly how it happened you're going to accept with the insurance company and the, and the police you're going to accept that one hundredth of one percent responsibility. You're going to tell it yeah. exactly how it happened. But in the doing so of everything, now that person that you just had that accident with that was on their way to go kill themselves, here's what just happened. You just saved their life. They seen Jesus in you. They seen something more than they've ever got to see before. Or or at least something that was so moving in that moment that all of a sudden now they don't want to kill themselves. Now, because you didn't pray to not have any accidents that week, what's the cost of a car or even a broken limb? What's the cost of that compared to a man's so, a woman's so? Now, you've just made your Father in Heaven very proud. That's one of those moments that if you was to go to heaven in that moment and be able to stand before God, that would be one of the moments he'd say, Welcome, my dear child. Oh, well done, my good and faithful servant. Well done. our children in the same manner our children watch everything that we do everything and they mimic everything that we do if we're spitting profanities if we're beating on our spouses if we're being accusatory when we don't actually know but, but we accuse somebody because in our warped brains, 
we think that us being accusatory is going to get the truth out of somebody. Well, they're not going to accept the truth. They're not going to accept responsibility if they didn't actually do it. But if they did, by me accusing, accusing them and making it sound like I already know that they did, well, yeah, they'll, they'll admit to it and tell on themselves. Wrong attitude, my friend. Here's, here's the problem with that attitude. <laughs> that may work at first, but you remember how I say everything done in darkness comes into the light? <clears throat> well, so maybe that works the first half dozen, dozen times. You you accuse somebody of so hold on, son. You accuse somebody of something that they're that you think that they've done, but you don't actually have any proof. And and maybe you just kind of know it in your spirit. You adding your two cents? Yeah. You want to say something? Go ahead. Maybe even you know it in your somehow in your spirit that this person did it. Maybe you just know that you know that you know without a, da- a shadow of a doubt that this person did it. However, you still don't have any proof. And you blame them. Now you're wrong. Now what you just did, even though it worked how many ever countless times prior to? Now what you just did is you just told on yourself because you just accused that person of something they didn't actually do. And a lot of people will actually, just to avoid a situation, they'll actually admit to the thing you're accusing them of even though they did not do it. Now, you have a warped sense of what happened because now you're believing your own lie because they just admitted to it to avoid a situation. But now, they also know what you're made about. They know at this point that you are going to accuse and that you've done it in the past and that you'll continue to do it. Now, if this person is a dishonest person, all right, then right or wrong, whether you're right or wrong in your accusation the next time, they're going to deny, 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 hand caught in a cookie jar, and they're still going to deny. Okay? Because now at this point, they know that you don't really know. And folks, another thing, and I've made this tragic mistake myself, and it it cost me dearly. In my marriage, unfortunately, the demonic forces at work would accuse me of things. On the face of it, it was my wife accusing me of things. But going deeper into it, it wasn't my wife. <clears throat> okay, but for y'all's sake, I'm going to refer to her as my ex-wife. <clears throat> my then wife. She would accuse me of things. She'd carry on so much about it. I just, you know, I wasn't real. I wasn't. I was trying to, I was trying to serve the Lord. But I just, I was failing at every angle. And I was trying to be humble. I was trying to exercise certain things. I was, I, I was going through a trial, trial and error phase, uh, experimenting with uh, trying this, trying that. And so what I began to do is I began to admit to things that she would accuse me of that I didn't actually do, just to get the situation over. Because I knew that if I would just admit to it, she'd lay off. And we'd move on past or whatever. Now here's the problem with that. Even still today, anytime the, the issue comes up, anytime she gets mad, she'll still throw all those things in my face that I admitted to even though I never did them she'll still throw it all in my face over and over and over and so what I did without realizing it is I gave Satan the weapon of destruction to use against me myself my friends my recommendation is I mean, unless it is a matter of absolute life or death, 
and, and, and admitting to something you didn't do is going to save your life. Unless that is the case, don't make the same mistake that I made. Don't, don't, don't accept responsibility for something that you actually did not do. Don't. Yeah. Yeah, don't do that. Because that's only, that's only making the situation worse in the long run. I don't, I did not foresee all this coming out of me today. <clears throat> but you know what? The Holy Spirit apparently has some people he needs to talk to right now. Ugh. I feel a peace and like the carnal side of me feels like I didn't really pray enough which really prayer is no more than just having a conversation with God it's all it is and the truth of the matter is is I actually did I just had a conversation with God and he had a conversation with y'all through me and we just kind of went back and forth right here on live stream folks welcome because I see the viewer count is going up you're more than welcome more than encouraged and when I mute this mic here in a minute and go back to uh, the music in the chat board more than encouraged to rewind this and see how all of that played out so we love you Lord we give you so much gratitude for the many blessings you put upon our lives Thank you for my son. Thank you for the viewers. Thank you for the hearts of those that see through all the rhetoric. Thank you for protecting my son and myself through all the nonsense. Thank you, Lord, for the people that have come in my life that you sent to give me encouragement, whether that be in a physical manner or uh, over the phone or uh, on private messages, emails even uh, people that create uh, YouTubers that create videos that are prophesying over me. Lord, thank you for each and every one of those people, Lord. And thank you for those that you send my way that need ministered to that I'm able to help along the path as well. Because ultimately, without those people that need the guidance,